Um, Dr. Williams, I'm really curious about the, the, the uh, pediatric cardiac surgeons you worked with, and you've worked with you know, some of the key players uh, in Boston. Can you reflect, first of all, on, on Dr. Gross? Well, Dr. Gross was in his last three years of uh, being the chief of surgery when I came. And th these were years when his interests were moving elsewhere, and he wasn't as present uh, in terms of very, very active participation in the program. And it, the, the statistics weren't very good as well. So we had a code at our conferences that if you started to uh, present a patient and people started shuffling their feet, that meant shuffle off to Buffalo and that meant that we were going to send that patient to um, Supermanian. So we would say, oh, oh, I'm sorry, wrong patient. Uh, that, that, that patient died of diphtheria and is no longer available or something. We, we would have some cover story. So but, but, we, but why? Because, uh, because they, and they were very select cases that we would send to Buffalo or to John Kirkland in Alabama or to the Mayo Clinic. And it was based on very high risk cases that we knew specifically had good results in those, those particular um, places with those surgeons. And there, was there a transition? Then you say he was in his last year. So what happened uh, next, as it were? Well, and, and what obviously he was on his way to retiring. And um, then uh, we started the interview process. John Kirkland looked at the job, and then Aldo Castaneda came and looked at the job. And I was a peon, so I wasn't in on the inner circle of how those decisions were made. But it, it was a big dramatic change when Aldo first came. And we were all very, very excited uh, because this was something new. Gross had been there for decades. And so no one really knew in a leadership position had come in so long. And we knew that something very important was about to change. So how did it change? What was that transition? Well, from my standpoint, I, when, when Aldo first came, I was just starting as a faculty person. And when you think about post-operative care beforehand, uh, the, it cons from the cardiologist standpoint, it consisted of the patient came up from surgery in the gross era, and we stood at attention behind a line and when everybody finished organizing the patient and getting everything ready, we were allowed to step forward, push the button for the EKG strip, read the EKG strip, pronounce the arrhythmia, and then step back. That's, that was sort of the extent of what we could do. We had one pressure transducer for monitoring patients, and when they had to do a pump case in the OR, the pressure transducer went to the OR, and so we were just balancing with, you know, mercury and whatever, uh, you know, uh, water columns, whatever we had to, to assess the pressure. So those were days when the cardiology participation was really minimal, uh, and when Castaneda came, it was a totally different thing. And I think that he and Dr. Natus had already discussed what the philosophy of care would be, and that's when they asked me to be the medical director of the CTICU and to take that on as a totally new task which was interesting because then I became a partner to all of the, the ICU nurses who had kept me behind the line before, and they were amazing people who were so expert and essentially taught me so much and sort of raised me and, and helped me in those early days to not make too many mistakes. 
I do want to get to that and what that means more, uh, but I want to get just just finish that portion about the, the the transition. So this was an entirely new thing with Dr. Castaneda coming in. Yes. Um, and, and you hadn't experienced it before. It's a new philosophy. What was a new philosophy? Like uh, we were speaking with Dr. Norwood last night. Mm -hmm. He was talking about you know a neurologist and neurosurgeon really don't have much of a relationship. They kind of keep themselves separate. Are you saying that change became? something different from your previous experience and compared to other types of relationships where it's surgeon and physician? It was a complete partnership where the cardiologist learned what was important for surgical success so that we could prepare the patient and present the patient for surgery at the right time because we understood what was going on in the operating room. And from the surgical standpoint, there was real interaction with the diagnostic procedures and f from the cardiologist's point of view, you know, what the anatomy and the, and the function would be. So there was a lot of crosstalk. Uh, and I think in the post-operative period and during surgery, uh, we would be in the operating room, so if we were, in the earliest days of echocardiography. So we would be making our diagnoses by very, very primitive means, and then we'd be in the operating room seeing the anatomy. And, and Aldo you know, would be very helpful to us in pointing out the anatomy in the operating room. And there was a dartboard in sort of the adjacent room, and when things got tense, and we weren't sure about a diagnosis, we could just go throw darts, you know, to relieve the, the, the anxiety. And then in the post-operative period, I think the cardiologists and the chief residents and, and Dr. Castaneda and Dr. Norwood worked so hand in hand together. Uh, it, was, it was really a joint, joint management. So that was a partnership now, which was, was totally different, right? It was totally different. Um, with the, um, with the um, uh, doctor, you mentioned Dr. Natus. Can you tell me just a little bit about him? Hungarian, <laughs> dynamic, uh, authoritarian, uh, brilliant. And he had the insight to recognize in Dr. Castaneda, you know, what the vision of the new kind of program would be. And he was very inventive. I mean, there were several things that he sort of saw coming. The adult congenital heart disease issue, the, the what surgery uh, you know, could be. And so it was a very interesting way that the older Hungarian gentleman brought the younger Guatemalan surgeon into a real partnership. And I think that partnership between the two of them sort of, you know, spilled over into the way the surgeons and the cardiologists related to each other. Um, you're, you've been talking, uh, you brought up the post-operative period um, a number of times. And, and from my understanding, that was a uh, part of that was a new approach that you helped develop as well as in terms of the intensive care unit. Am I correct? After the surgery, what, what does that mean exactly? What what developed? Well, one of the things that we were developing all together, and I don't think it was me; it was just the entire team. We were constantly improving what we knew, and I think that is. I, I like to call it heuristic and iterative. We were doing the same thing over and over again, and each time we learned from the last time so that we could do it better the next time. And we were really pushing things forward because what was developing was the ability to take care of increasingly younger and more fragile uh, babies. And that was something that was entirely new. And that took everything we could learn. I think Aldo had just been there weeks when uh, he was discussing the surgery that he had done uh, that week in our cath conference. And surgical cath conference was high drama. And Dr. Nada sitting there and Dr. Castaneda sitting on the right. 
and everybody was ready with their elevator speech, what they had to say, and you either got an approval with a nod from Dr. Natus or a smile or a serious frown, and which would scar you for weeks. And Aldo was describing a tet that he had operated on in which there was a little bit of aortic regurgitation postoperatively. And he said, I, 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 I think I did that surgery rather badly. I could have done it better. And everybody held their breath. No one in Harvard had ever said before that they could have done something better. This was a totally new concept. So the next week, one of my cardiology colleagues uh, said, well, I did this cardiac catheterization, but I think I could have done it better. It was the most amazing attitude shift, and I think that was the most important thing that allowed us to make the advances that we made because we went through every patient every week and not just talked about you know, what potential complications there were, but in detail, what possible detail could we have done better? 